For a woman, a grown woman to run the public was outside the social norm. When I would go out and, rain, and it was raining, the police would stop me because they thought I was running away from something. Because why would I be out running in the rain? I think he didn't appreciate that a woman could be strong and could handle a lot of the same things the guys were dealing with. The first step in making a social change is that somebody somewhere has to think differently. This thought if you did anything arduous, you were going to get big legs, grow hair on your chest, turn into a man, your uterus was going to fall out. He said, no dame ever ran no marathon. I'm going to finish this race on my hands and my knees if I have to. Running has been a form of exercise that has been around for centuries. People run for all different types of reasons. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Oh, my hair. Oh, my well, I was born here uh, in the Boston area. And uh, I went to the University of California and I studied philosophy. I also went to the Museum of Fine Arts School. I always loved to run. So as a kid, I grew up running. And I just loved the feeling of running, feeling free and open. And I loved the woods and nature. So I ran just as a way of expressing the joy of life. I was born in Brooklyn um, and grew up in Brooklyn, went to nursing school there and worked. And New York University Hospital. Uh, the book came out about jogging and had adults doing this. So then I started running a little bit more. I was just so fortunate that, you know, I loved it and I was able to do it. My name's Gwen Hollis. I'm 25. I work for Stewart's. I'm the auditor of 26 stores. My running inspirations are um, definitely my mom. Uh, growing up, she was really big on us having an outlet for every part of our life. Though today running is common among all genders, women weren't always able to run professionally. And in those days, no one ran. Men didn't run. Women, for a woman, a grown woman to run in public was outside the social norm. It was really thought to be improper. When I would go out and, rain, and it was raining, the police would stop me because they thought I was running away from something. Because why would I be out running in the rain? They didn't understand it. Runner Catherine Switzer, known as the girl who started it all, ignited the movement for women's equality in running in 1967. On April 19th that year, Catherine Switzer registered under the name K.V. Switzer at the Boston Marathon. During her race, an official named Jock Semple grabbed her and tried to take her off the course. The journalists got very aggressive. What are you trying to prove? You know, are you a suffragette? Are you a crusader? Whatever that is, you know. And I said, what? I'm just trying to run. Bobby Gibb is another runner involved in the movement for equality in women's running. So I wrote for my application and they told me that the women are not physiologically able to run marathon distances. We can't take the medical liability. And furthermore, it's a men's division race. There are no women's division marathons. So suddenly I saw, wow, there's a little chink in the armor. I have a way to challenge this thing that had been so frustrating to me as a young woman growing up in society and seeing how we had to live in a box, very restricted. You got married, you had 2.3 children, you, you take care of your house, and that was it. You couldn't be a doctor, you couldn't be a lawyer. I could see what was coming down the line, and it was all based on this false belief that women weren't able, they weren't mentally able, they weren't physically able to do these things. And so I thought, wow, if I can prove this one thing wrong, then it's going to throw into question all the other false beliefs. And then in 1964, I saw the Boston Marathon for the first time, and I fell in love with it. Something inside of me said, I want to be part of this thing. I came by bus, so I, was, I wanted to get warmed up. I ran around, I found a little place near the start um, where I could hide in the bushes, and then when the race started, I could jump in. And the men quickly realized, I was disguised, I had a blue hooded sweatshirt and my brother's Bermuda shorts and new running shoes, which was a mistake. The men quickly realized I was a woman and, when, and I said, I'm getting hot, uh, I want to take this off, but I'm afraid if they see I'm a woman, they'll throw me out. They said, we won't let them throw you out. It was a pivotal event 
in changing the way people, men and women, thought about women. Although Catherine was awarded the title of the first official female winner of the Boston Marathon, it was Bobby who crossed that finish line first. Catherine, I have had hardly any contact at all because I don't admire what she's done. I think if she had told the truth from the beginning, I'm happy to give her credit for what she has done for women's running. And so when she made a career out of it, which I applaud that, and I applaud her recent run in Boston, 50 years later, I think that's a great achievement. And that's, that's something that's real and good. So I applaud the things she's actually done but when she insinuates or says that she was the first official woman or the first woman or and ignores the fact that I finished an hour ahead of her in this race, that is a lie. It's a lie of omission and it's a lie of commission. It's all over the media because she's part of the media. And it's people are furious. The running community is furious at this. I'm not sure what Catherine Switzer's first marathon Boston was. Um, it was a year after Bob. Oh, see, yeah. there you go. Yeah, so Bobby is the pioneer. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, Catherine made a, a big deal out of it, you know, because she had the number on or whatever. <laughs> but uh, Bobby was the, uh, the runner. Bobby Gibb is recognized by the Boston Athletics Association as an official women's winner of the Boston Marathon in 1966. She also won in 1967 and 1968, years before women would legally and officially be allowed to run in the race. Nina Cusick began her activism in 1971 when she proposed ending the ban on women's marathon running to the Amateur Athletics Association. Well, I had gotten all the rules changed and finally they said certain women could run the marathon. They had to start at a different time and place from the men. The AAU just you know, changed all the rules so that uh, women were officially allowed to run marathon at first. This allowed Nina to become the first official female winner of the Boston Marathon a year after her proposal. Well, I, I was just I was happy to win, of course, and I was so happy it was official. So it, it just felt like a, a wonderful place to, to win <laughs> when we became official. Months later, Nina continued her activism, bringing her concerns over to the city of New York. When I got the rule changed that women could run marathons, but they had to start 10 minutes before or after the men, um, or from a different starting line. And so we felt like that was kind of still discrimination. <laughs> so Jane Murphy and me and a couple of others, you know, we all got together and uh, we decided we would just have this little sit down strike. And when the gun went off, our 10 minutes would be added to our time. And we just sat and, you know, we waited. And I think that that made a big difference. Nina became the first woman to triumph in both the New York and Boston marathons. She attended the Amateur Athletics Conference, bringing a lawsuit with her. That year, the separate starting line requirement was banned. Um, and so I went and we didn't even have a women's long distance running committee, so I had to put in the rules. We got the long distance running committee. You know, what we pursued and they agreed and went to the international governing body. Nina's work didn't stop there. She was among the group of people that lobbied for women's marathoning to be added to the Olympics. Women's marathoning, they claimed, just wasn't popular enough. The lobbyists won their bid, and in 1984, women's marathoning appeared in the Olympics for the first time in history. Times have changed, and as of 2013, 43% of marathon runners are female, with the numbers rising every year. Though they are still facing challenges, women are given the legs they didn't have 50 years ago. My male coach, who was still the coach all the way until I graduated high school, was brutal, and on a regular basis ignored the help that I asked for. I think he definitely had that mentality that men are stronger than women. And women, in his opinion, and he talked about it all the time, he was very old school, as he would say. Um, but he made it very clear that he didn't think women should be in sports. I think that that was the main mentality behind it. I think he didn't appreciate that a woman could be strong and could handle a lot of the same things the guys were dealing with. Why are we being separated when all of us can be on the same level when it comes to our ability and our knowledge of running. So for me, I think it just may be even better. I think him 
making me feel like I should feel small made me a better runner. And in the long run, it made me understand that I can do pretty much anything I put my mind to. And I will do everything any man can do. Like later on, after we started running a little bit more, five Ks on our own, my friends and I, uh, we always had a quote on the back of our shirts that said, run like a girl. Because in you know high school, that was a big thing our coach always said. He's like, you gotta run like a man. Okay, I'm gonna run like a girl because I run the way I run and I'm just as good as the next one. Today, because of these extraordinary runners, women have the ability to make leaps and bounds in the world of competitive running. These women and their accomplishments have been overlooked in the past, but now they are starting to get the recognition they deserve. The first step in making a social change is that somebody somewhere has to think differently. I mean, so it's again, it comes back to overcoming false beliefs and replacing the false belief with the true belief, the true belief, the fact, the truth. So the demonstrating the truth, the woman could run a 26.2 mile marathon and run it well. I was completely ignorant of running times and personal bests and all that. I just wanted to show that women could run and run and I ran and I finished ahead of two thirds of the pack. To just, to just enjoy the moving of your body and your mind goes so free. <laughs> It's wonderful. <laughs> what does it mean to you when I say run like a girl? It means run fast as you can. Keep doing it because it's working. If somebody else says that running like a girl or kicking like a girl or shooting like a girl is something that you shouldn't be doing, that's their problem. Because if you're still scoring and you're still getting to the ball on time and you're still being first, if you're doing it right. It doesn't matter what they say. I mean. Yes, I kick like a girl, and I swim like a girl, and I walk like a girl, and I wake up in the morning like a girl, because I am a girl. And that's not something that I should be ashamed of, so I'm going to do it anyway.